You know that moment when you're absolutely convinced you're about to die, but in a fun way. Yeah, that's basically the vibe at Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Night. It's like they took all the worst nightmares, fed them protein shakes, and then let them loose in a theme park. With 10 haunted houses designed to scare you so badly, you might just question your life choices. Plus five scare zones where looking evil is pretty much guaranteed. It's the kind of event where you'll be screaming one minute and laughing hysterically the next, if you survive that is. Throw in some of Universal Studios' most intense rides, and you got yourself a night that'll leave you questioning why you paid good money to be traumatized. Tickets are on sale now, so if you're into the whole screaming till you lose your voice experience, this is your jam. Just a heads up though, if you're under 13, or you know, sane, you may want to sit this one out and leave the costumes at home. They've got plenty of terror to go around without you adding to the chaos. So here's how to make the most out of Halloween Horror Night. Do you want to actually enjoy the Super Bowl of Scary without spending half the night stuck in a line? Listen up. Here's the key. Get there early. And by early, I don't mean just showing up 15 minutes before the gates open and thinking you're ahead of the curve. No, I'm talking at least an hour before the event starts. Trust me, you'll thank me when you're breezing through security instead of playing. How long will it take me to find a parking spot game? If you can swing it, try to come in August or September. I know October is the obvious choice, but guess what? It's also when everyone else decides to show up. So unless you're into the idea of sharing your creepy experience with the entire population of a small town, aim for those off-peak months. More spooks, fewer people. Sounds like a win to me. All right, you're considering staying at a Universal Orlando Resort Hotel for Halloween Horror Nights. First off, good choice. It's like signing up for a horror movie where you actually get to survive, but with fewer bad decisions and more inclusive perks. Here's the deal, staying at one of the Universal hotels during HHN is basically like getting a backstage pass to the spookiest show in town. You'll have this magical, possibly cursed hotel key that grants you access to a dedicated HHN entry gate. Each night from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Translation, you get to be among the first to start screaming your lungs out while everyone else is still fighting through traffic and desperately trying to find a parking spot. But the perks don't stop there. Staying close to the action means you're not only dodging the madness of Orlando traffic, but also scoring complimentary transportation to Universal theme parks and city walks. No need to worry about how you're getting back to your room after your heart's been sufficiently put through the ringer. And let's talk about those hotels. Each one has its own vibe. So no matter where you stay, you're still in the thick of the horror. Some hotels even take the spooky atmosphere up a notch with themed lobbies and creepy photo ops so you can keep the terror alive even when you're just grabbing your morning coffee. All right, so you made it to Halloween Horror Night and now you're staring at the endless sea of people thinking, how do I avoid spending my entire night in line? Enter the Halloween Horror Nights Express Pass, aka your golden ticket to skipping those soul crushing weights. Here's how it works. With the Express Pass, you get to bypass the regular lines once at each haunted house and participating attraction. That's right, no more standing around while the anticipation drains out of you like the blood from your soon to be screaming face. Instead, you'll be zipping past the masters, straight to the front, where the real terror awaits. Sure, the express pass isn't a free-for-all. Each house and ride is a one-time deal. But trust me, when you're faced with a choice between a 90-minute wait or cutting that down to a fraction, the decision practically makes itself. In short, you want to maximize your scream time and minimize your standing in line time. The HHN Express Pass is your best friend, because let's be honest, the only thing scarier than the haunted houses is the idea of wasting your night stuck in line. Okay, 
So Universal is basically like, hey, do you want to have the most horrifying, nightmare-inducing experience of your life? Great. Here are 10 houses to make sure you never sleep again. They got this lineup that's like a greatest hits album of all your worst fears, but in real life. First off, some of these haunted houses are inspired by the biggest names in aura, which means you can expect to walk through actual physical manifestations of your most traumatic movie memories. I'm talking about the kind of stuff where you walk out the other side wondering if you're still in the real world or if you've accidentally stepped into a parallel dimension where everything is just slightly more terrifying. But don't think you can predict what's coming because Universal is also throwing in some original haunted houses designed by people who probably stay up at night thinking, hey, how can I make sure everyone who walks through this gets at least three new phobias? These are the kinds of houses where you'll be constantly looking over your shoulder, convinced something is about to jump out at you, because it is. Like, you'll enter a room and instead of thinking, oh cool, Halloween decorations, your brain will be like, this is where I die. And honestly, the best part, you won't even see it coming. Each house is a total mind game, like a haunted choose-your-own-adventure where all the choices lead to you screaming. Whether it's a twisted take on your favorite horror movie or some completely new nightmare fuel, Universal's got you covered. So get ready to have your mind ripped apart in the best way possible because these haunted houses are not to be messed around with. All right, so you're about to embark on what is basically the ultimate horror tour through some of the scariest legends you've never heard of, unless you're already a fan of having nightmares. In which case, welcome home. Your guide for the evening, none other than La Moretta herself. Because apparently, just regular creepy stories aren't enough. You need death leading you by the hand through this terrifying trio. First up, there's Twella La Pucci, which is basically like a vampire, but with a twist that makes it even more terrifying. Imagine a creature that can shapeshift into an animal, then sneak into your house, to feast on your blood. And here's the kicker. The Twella La Pucci could be someone you know. Like how are you supposed to survive when the monster is literally living its best double life as your friendly neighbor? Spoiler alert, you probably don't. Next, you got La Chusa, a witch who turns into an owl and stalks you from the shadows. If you hear an eerie whistle in the night, it's already too late. She's either coming for you or just playing mind games because hey witches get bored too. La Chusa is like the ultimate mix of supernatural horror and bird watching gone horribly wrong and if you see her you might as well accept that you're probably not making it till dawn. And then there's El Silvan who's basically the embodiment of just don't listen to creepy whistling in the dark. This guy carries around a bag of bones which is exactly as cheerful as it sounds. And if you hear his whistle, the distance doesn't matter. He's coming for you. The only good news is if the whistle sounds close, he's far away. But if it sounds distant, well, better start running because he's probably right behind you. So, tien cuidado because surviving a night with these legends is like playing a horror game on expert mode. La Muertes might be your guide, but let's be honest, She's probably just here for the entertainment value, watching you try to navigate a night filled with shape-shifting vampires, witches turned owls, and the world's creepiest whistler. Good luck making it out alive, or at least with your sanity intact. All right, our first house, Monstrous, Monsters of Latin America. So what was your first impression? That was freaking gory. Yeah, I think the sets were fantastic. The animatronics were amazing. Yeah, the storyline where it was eating the babies and stuff, that was very disturbing. That uh, first um, first room where it was the woman with this bloody empty stroller screaming, that got me. Oh, yeah. Um, I got at least, what, eight, nine jump scares? Something like that. Yeah. So that's the first house of the night. And I'd have to give it high marks. How about you? Oh, yeah. It was fun. It was fun. It was like a middle of the road one. Would you do it again? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it was just, that storyline's really not for me. Right. But the animatronics are yeah. amazing. 
Everybody as well was. as the actors. As well as the actors. All right, we're on to the next house. All right, first, let's talk about A Quiet Place, the movie that essentially says, what if stepping on a Lego was the least of your problems? In this post-apocalyptic world, you can't make a peep. Like literally, even a tiny sneeze could be your last. The Abbott family is basically living in a never-ending game of the quiet game. But the stakes are getting killed by sound-sensitive monsters instead of just winning a cookie. Imagine trying to tiptoe through the life like you're playing a high-stakes version of the floor is lava, except it's more like the air is sound. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife, but quiet, because you know, monsters. They got this farmhouse set up that's essentially home alone, but with sand pass and no talking. And every single thing they do is like watching someone defuse a bomb with a plastic spoon. This house takes you through the Quiet Place movie set, from the farmhouse to the woods to the foundry, and each location is just another opportunity for your anxiety to go into overdrive. The second someone so much as breathes too hard, these creatures, who are basically the worst kind of noise-canceling headphones, show up, ready to turn the volume on you down to zero, permanently. So if you're thinking of following the Abbott's lead, just remember, when life gives you monsters with ultra-sensitive hearing, maybe don't slam the door on your way out. So that was The Quiet Place. What did you think? Uh, kind of boring. Kind of boring. Animatronics and the puppetry was good, right? Yeah, yeah, the puppetry was great. Um, it was really dark. Yeah, they were just... Like, physically dark. I got, like, one jump scare at the very end, and that was mostly because... It was not monstrous. I, I thought that the uh, the house was over, and so it was that line last one that got me. The last one. Yeah. All right, we're on to the next house. So, imagine just going about your day maybe thinking about getting a pumpkin spice latte when suddenly bam a bone chilling specter decides to bust out of an ancient artifact like it's the world's worst surprise party and this ghost isn't just here to float around and make spooky noises oh no he's got bigger plans like freezing the entire planet into a giant popsicle but don't worry the ghostbusters are on it because who else are you gonna call? They gotta save you, me, and basically everyone from a second ice age because apparently one was more than enough. Picture the guys suiting up, not just with their proton packs, but maybe also some really intense thermal underwear, ready to take on a ghost that got some more in common with Elsa than Casper. This is the kind of scenario where you're like, okay, I was prepared for maybe a regular haunting, but an ancient ghost with the power to freeze the world? That's a new one. The Ghostbusters had to pull out all the stops, combining their usual ghostbusting tech with whatever heat sources they can find. I'm talking flamethrowers, space heaters, and probably a lot of hot coffee. So, if you're into the idea of a battle between the Ghostbusters and a ghost that's basically the love child of a cursed amulet and a polar vortex, this is your jam. Just remember to bundle up because things are about to get frosty in the most paranormal way possible. Alright, so while we're in line to get some of the Ghostbusters food, Tell me what you thought about the Ghostbusters house. Oh, I love that house. Yeah. It was, uh, it wasn't super scary, which I like, but it was fun and it was filled with the storyline and the characters that we love from the latest movie and just from all the movies, so I love it. Bad guys and stilts. Yeah, the bad guy was, was in stilts. And there was plenty of jump scares. Yeah, and then all our favorite Ghostbusters were in it. Yeah. Did you see Winston? Yeah. I just got Miss Winston. Winston came at me right and at Slimer. the end. Slimer. Slimer was in it. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I love that room. Really a fun house. So right up there. Would yeah. you do it again? Oh, absolutely. That's my favorite one so far tonight. <laughs> Mountain. So, 
You've been invited to what sounds like just another quirky birthday party, right? But then you see the name, the Barmy Triplets. And if that doesn't send a chill down your spine, just wait until you hear what their idea of a good time is. These aren't your average kids blowing out candles and unwrapping presents. No, the Barmy Triplets have a, let's say unique party theme in mind. They're all about recreating the murders of their entire family. Because you know, some kids like pinatas, Others like reenacting unsolved homicides. It's a niche, but they're really committed to it. So there you are, standing in what looks more like a crime scene than a birthday bash, and suddenly it hits you. The party's over, and so very likely are you. As the triplets get ready to relive their gruesome family history, you're left wondering if that RSVP was the worst decision of your life. All right, triplets of terror. What did you think? Uh, it was all right. It, it was. I felt like it was a story that I didn't know, so I was having a hard time figuring out like, well, I think what was that's supposed a, to be going on. Not in. based on a movie. It's, uh, yeah, I know, but they all have stories, and I was just trying to figure out what the story was. Something about March 3rd was the anniversary of some murders. Right. So, three little kids murdered their family on March 3rd. Ah, okay. Every 10 years or so, they come back and kill more people. Got it. So, see, I thought the storyline kind of flowed. Yeah. I think what I was really impressed with was the sound design. I really didn't notice. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I thought the sound uh, design was great. I thought it was an easy-to-follow uh, storyline. Once you knew what the storyline was, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't fun like Ghostbusters, but it, yeah. it was all right. They had good, the actors did a great job. Yeah. All right, on to the next house. So, you're chaperoning this field trip to a candy factory. Sounds like a dream, right? A bunch of sugar hype kids running around stuffing their faces with free samples. What could possibly go wrong? Well, turns out, a lot. Like, the kids turning into candy-coated killers level wrong. One minute, they're all excited about getting their hands on the latest gummy creation, and the next, they're sprouting candy fangs and looking at you like you're the last piece of chocolate in the box. It's like Willy Wonka meets The Shining, but with more sprinkles. So now you're not trying to just keep the kids from bouncing off the walls. You're trying to keep them from literally eating you alive. Because when they said the candy was killer, they weren't kidding. So Major Sweets Candy Company? Very good. Very good. Two thumbs up. I enjoyed that one. Set in the 50s? Yeah, I guess so. Because yeah. of the music? Yeah. Yeah. And I love the banging. Yeah, it was a factory. So yeah. you could hear it the factory. And you could feel the bangs and stuff. Yeah. It was really A lot great. of jump scares got me several times. <laughs> it got you worse than it got me. It got me worse than it got her. So, <laughs> yeah. Highly recommend Major Sweets. Yeah. That okay. Was great. Anything else? Nope. All right, move on to the next house. All right. So imagine you're just minding your own business when, out of nowhere, you get caught in the middle of this epic showdown. That's basically like if Mean Girls went full horror movie. On one side, you've got Sakia Van Helsing. He's probably the most badass monster hunter you've never heard of. Teaming up with the Bride of Frankenstein, who, let's be real, is way overdue for her own spinoff. And on the other side, Dracula's daughter and her squad of monstrous mavens, who are out here trying to prove that being undead doesn't mean you also can't be totally fierce. The battle is like when ultimate monster girl gangs throw down, with Sakya and the bride bringing all the power, strategy, and probably a lot of smoldering looks, while Dracula's daughter and her crew are like, we might be creatures of the night, but we got style and fangs for days, baby. It's the kind of epic clash where you're not sure whether to be terrified or just stand there in awe. Because honestly, everyone involved is so cool that it's hard to even pick a side. Expect lots of dramatic entrances, possibly some backstory reveals that make you go, wait, am I kind of rooting for the monsters now? And of course, tons of supernatural powers flying around like it's the ultimate spooky showdown. 
This isn't just a battle of good versus evil. It's like a monster royal rumble where the stakes are, who's the ultimate goth queen tonight? So, if you've ever wanted to see what happens when some of horror's most iconic female characters throw down in a fight that's equal part epic and terrifying, this is your moment. Just be prepared to walk away feeling like you've witnessed something truly legendary. And maybe also like you need to rethink your Halloween costume plans. Which house was that? Eternal Bloodlines, Universal Monsters. All right, so what did you think? Oh, I loved it. That was great. All right, I liked it too. What was your favorite part? I don't know. <laughs> I liked the Brides of Dracula. They got me a couple of times. And the mummies. There's all kind of mummies. Yeah. Did you see the Bride of Frankenstein? Yeah, I saw the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> she was a good guy, right? I think so. Of course, the Van Helsing. So how would you think that would line up with the other Universal Monster Houses? At least the one you've been to. I like the other one better, but just barely. Just barely. So would you do this again? Yep. Absolutely. I'd do it again. Would you say it's as good as Ghostbusters? Not quite. All right. Ghostbusters is still the top house. That's still my favorite, yes. Absolutely. So... You find yourself wandering into this quaint little goblin village, and it's all very fairy tale gone wrong, with crooked houses, weird smells, and goblins bustling around like they got some big event to plan. Spoiler, they do, and you're on the menu. Turns out this isn't just any feast, it's a full blown culinary event for goblins, orcs, hobgoblins, witches, and basically every other creepy creature that just likes to chow down on something with a pulse. And you, my unlucky friend, are the piece de resistance. Yep, you're the main course, the star of the show, the dish that everyone's drooling over. As you watch them sharpen their knives and set the table, you start to realize that this whole exploring a goblin village idea was maybe not your brightest moment. Now, your only options are to become a gourmet meal or find a way out before they start seasoning you. Good luck with that. So what was that one called? Goblin's Feast. Goblin's Feast. And yes, it was a Goblin's Feast. <laughs> so what did you think? I thought it was fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. A lot of scares, a lot of jumps, uh, great animatronics. Yeah. Yeah. That has to be right up there. So you have anything to add? Nope. All right, so on to the next house. All right, picture this. You're at the Cary Drive-In, and it's that time of year again. The one where you willingly subject yourself to a marathon of horror movies. That range from, I can't believe this exists, to, I need to sleep with the lights on for the next week. Yes, my friends, it's a night of creature features, grindhouse gore, and whatever else the filmmakers cooked up when they thought, you know what the world needs, more nightmares. This is the kind of event where you can scream your head off, spill popcorn, and feel like you're part of some weird low budget horror film yourself, only this time, you're the one surviving the night, probably. So buckle up, grab that overpriced concession sand soda, and prepare for an evening where the scariest thing might just be how you're enjoying it. All right, so Slaughter Cinema 2. What's Fantastic house. Fantastic house. The, uh, one of the uh, Mardi Gras jesters vomited on me. That, that's, all, that's just like Mardi Gras. <laughs> and then there was the, the, the shark, the animatronic yeah, shark. the animatronic shark. Freaking unbelievable. Awesome. Great I didn't house. Really, I feel like I missed, like, the jump scares seemed to miss us. They were hitting us ahead of us and behind us, but that's okay because I still had a lot so of fun. So best house of the night? No, I'm still I'm still Ghostbusters, still my but favorite. Right up there. Right up there. Yeah, highly recommend. Yeah. All right, move on to the next house. So let's talk about the latest must-see exhibit at the local museum, the Rotting Stone. Now you're probably thinking, wow, a stone that rots things. How terrifying could that be? Well, according to legend, this thing isn't just some random old rock. No, it's like the rock's evil twin from another dimension. And it's not content with just sitting in a display case looking creepy. Apparently, the museum thought it would be a great idea 
to put this ancient curse on full display. And now, surprise, the stone's evil spirit is out and about, doing what it does best, decaying everything in its path. So, you're feeling brave, or maybe just a little bit reckless, you go and check it out. But fair warning, that tingling sensation on the back of your neck isn't just your imagination. It's probably the evil spirit deciding you're next on the list. All right, we just got out of the museum, Deadly Exhibit. What did you think? That was pretty good. That was really good. Yeah. I think it was well lit. Yeah. It, everything was rotting everywhere you looked. <laughs> yeah, it was a very uh, Last of Us-esque. Very Last of Us. A lot of jump scares that got me a lot of times. I think it was a pretty good house. Yep. All right, would you do it again? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely, yeah. definitely. Good as Ghostbusters? No. No. Good as Scream Theater? No. No. All right, on to the last house. All right, let's dive into the absolute worst Airbnb you could ever book, the Further. It's this dark, creepy dimension that's basically the supernatural version of being stuck in an endless DMV line, except with way more terrifying demons trying to chap you there forever. First up, there's the red-faced demon. If you ever thought, hey, Darth Maul is cool, but what if he was way scarier and lived in a nightmarish, shadowy realm? Well, congratulations. This guy is your worst dreams come true. You're not just wandering into any old haunted house here. You're stepping into his lair, which is conveniently located behind the red door. And let's be real, nothing good ever happens when you open a door that's been ominously capitalized in all the marketing material. But wait, it gets better, or worse, depending on how much you enjoy sleeping at night. There's also Keyface, who's like if your janitor had a really dark secret and also happened to be a demon. His whole thing is locking up your spirit, which is just a super chill way of saying he's going to imprison your soul in the further, where you'll be stuck hanging out with all the other poor souls who didn't make it out in time. So basically, your goal is simple. Don't get trapped. Avoid the red-faced demon's lair like it's the world's worst basement. And if you see Keyface, just run. This is not the kind of place where you can just nope your way out. Once you're in, getting out with your spirit intact is like playing a twisted game of hide and seek with the stakes cranked up to maximum nightmare mode. So good luck and maybe leave a trail of breadcrumbs or something. Just in case you need to find your way back from the most terrifying dimension you've ever visited. All right, Insidious, the house. They say it's one of the scariest houses they've had in a long time. Certainly lived up to its height. It skewed the perspective very well, if you know what I'm saying. There's this huge door and you walk through it. Very good. Scare actors look great. A lot of jump scares. Ranks right up there with any of the houses I've been through. I mean, some of the other houses I've been through over the years, uh, the Universal Monsters house, um, probably still my favorite, but my tied for my two favorites of tonight is Ghostbusters and Insidious. So definitely check it out. All right, so you signed up for a night of frights thinking you'll just pop into a few haunted houses, maybe get a little spooked, and call it a day. But nope, not here. Because this place doesn't just confine the terror to a few buildings. They decided the whole street is fair game. Welcome to the Scare Zone, where the second you step outside, you're basically a moving target. The scare actors aren't just lurking in the shadows, they're actively stalking you. Blending in with the crowd just enough to lull you into a false sense of security before they strike. One minute you'll casually walk into the next attraction, and the next you're face to face with something that looks like it crawled out one of your worst nightmares. And here's the best, or worst part, there's no safe zones. The entire place is a minefield of horror, so good luck catching your breath or having a normal conversation. Because in these scare zones, the only thing scarier than what's waiting in the haunted houses is the fact that you never really feel safe, no matter where you are. 
So, you think you're ready for a night of horror, huh? But not just any horror, a Bloomhouse horror gauntlet. Yeah, this isn't just your average scare zone with a few jump scares and some fog machines. No, this is like stepping into a living, breathing Bloomhouse movie marathon where every terrifying character is out to get you. First up, you're dodging the sinister sadist from the purge because nothing says welcome to the horror show like a bunch of mass maniacs with a free pass to unleash all their pent-up rage. And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, there she is, Megan, with her unsettling smile and that dance. You know the one. She's not just dancing into your nightmares, she's pretty much choreographing them. And just when you think you survived that, you stumble into the black phone territory, where creepy whispering voices are the least of your problems. This isn't just a walkthrough, it's a high stakes survival game where you're the main character and the only prize is getting out with your sanity intact. Good luck, because you're gonna need it. So, picture this. You're wandering around the backwaters of Louisiana, which is never a good idea. Just minding your own business, probably taking in the creepy but kind of beautiful scenery as one does. You know, like you do in a horror movie, right before everything goes horribly wrong. And surprise, you somehow stumble onto private property, because of course you did. But this isn't just any private property. Nope, you'll wander right into the middle of some serious bad juju. Turns out, this land comes with its own army of zombies, and not just any zombies. These are the restless, rotting remains of other poor souls who made the same mistake you did. They're the unfortunate trespassers who got killed off and dumped in the nearby marsh, only to come back with a serious grudge and a taste for, well, you. Now you're neck deep in this swampy, moss-covered nightmare with these bog-born zombies slowly closing in. They're not fast, but they're relentless, dragging themselves through the muck with one go in mind, making you the newest member of their undead crew. It's the kind of situation where you start questioning every life choice that led you here, while also desperately trying to figure out how to escape before you become the next body dumped into that cursed marsh. Good luck, because in this part of Louisiana, Getting lost isn't an inconvenience, it's a death sentence. So, you somehow ended up in this nightmare realm that feels like it was yanked straight out of your deepest, darkest fears. Welcome to the otherworldly hellscape where reality just gave up and decided to go full on surreal horror mode. And the worst part, you're not alone. Here, four merciless queens reign supreme each one more twisted and terrifying than the last. They're not just content with ruling this nightmarish dimension, they're dedicated to making sure you never forget it. These queens have hordes of fanatical followers at their command, all ready to ensure you get the full experience of this waking nightmare. These aren't your average horror villains, they're the kind that crawl out of the corners of your mind you try to ignore. The ones that make you second guess every shadow and whisper. And with their devoted followers looking around every corner, there's no escape. You're trapped in their world now. A twisted blend of the unimaginable and the all too real. Where every step you take pulls you deeper into the madness. So yeah, if you thought you could just breeze through this, think again. This is a horror experience where survival isn't just about getting out. It's about making it out with your sanity intact. Step right up, step right up. Welcome to a twisted take on your classic Renaissance fair, where the theme isn't just medieval, it's medieval torture. That's right. Instead of turkey legs and jousting nights, you're in for a day of gloriously gory, homemade torture devices designed to make you wish you just stayed at home. Imagine wandering through a fairground where every booth offers a new way to test your pain tolerance. Want to see how long you can last in the Iron Maiden? Or maybe just try out the rack, 
where they'll stretch you just enough to make you scream, but not enough to kill you. Yet. The whole place is like if someone took a history lesson on medieval torture and said, yeah, but what if it was like, fun. And let's not forget the performing sadistic gestures, knights with a little bit too much enthusiasm for their craft, and executioners who are just way too good at their jobs. They're all here to make sure you get the full experience, where the only way out is to be put out of your misery. So, if you ever wondered what it would be like to step into the darker side of history, now's your chance. Just don't expect to leave with your dignity or your limbs intact. You'd think that your HHN Express Pass would be your golden ticket to breezing past the lines, not just for the haunted houses, but also for the rides. The promise of bypassing those soul-crushing wait times is the main reason you splurged on it in the first place, right? But here's the kicker, while it does get you into the houses faster, when it comes to the rides, things get a little trickier. You might find yourself standing in a line, just a slightly less horrifying one. It's like being promised front row seats at a concert, only to find out your view is partially obstructed by a pillar. Better than nothing, but not quite what you were hoping for. Alright, so picture this, you're walking up to Gringotts Bank. The imposing facade giving you the serious, I'm about to rob a bank, but it's totally fine because magic vibes. You get closer and bam, there's this colossal dragon just hanging out on the roof. You have to marvel at the Green God's lobby. Seriously, they've outdone themselves here. Goblins are bustling around doing their goblinly banking stuff, but don't get too comfortable. They're definitely eyeballing you in that we know you're a tourist, but we're pretending to be super professional away. Take a moment to gawk at the crystal sparkles before you head deeper into the vaults. While you're winding your way through more bank corridors, surrounded by portraits and plaques of goblins you pretend to recognize, you're making your way through the bank's lower level. Things are looking great. You got Harry and Ron and Hermione popping up to say hi, or more likely to remind you how much cooler they are than you. But hold on, because Volomart and Beltrix and some random trolls are all like, nah, we're gonna ruin your day, man. Eventually, you find yourself in Bill Weasley's office. Bill's there, looking all cool and ginger, and Bordak's got some serious tour guide energy going for him. They chat a bit, and just as you're getting into the vibe, things start to go south. And by south, I mean the ride decides it's taking a break. Cue the awkwardness. The show ends, and the doors to the next room, yeah, they're not opening. Behind you, the doors are also like, nope, not today. So you're just stuck. 10 minutes stuck, with 50 strangers who suddenly feel way too close. It's like the most uncomfortable elevator ride ever, but with more wizards and less personal space. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, probably because it was, the doors open and you're free. But honestly, if you're at Halloween Horror Nights, where every second counts, you may want to think twice before committing to a ride that could turn into a weirdly intimate lock-in situation. Maybe just stick to the haunted houses. They may scare you, but at least you can keep moving. Between the haunted houses, scare zones, and the adrenaline fuel fun of Universal Horror Nights, you absolutely have to carve out some time to indulge in their signature treats. These aren't your average theme park snacks. They're meticulously crafted to be just as spooky and memorable as the attractions themselves. The menus might feel overwhelming, and honestly, who has time to wait in line when there's a chainsaw-wielding maniac chasing after you? So do yourself a favor and check it out on their website ahead of time. Pick one or two that really grab your attention and make them your priority. Trust me, these bites are as much a part of the experience as getting lost in the fog. So, you're thinking about celebrating the Day of the Dead in style. And we're better to do that than at the Toosome Chocolate Emporium in Savory Feast Kitchen. Because nothing says honoring the dearly departed quite like indulging in an over-the-top dessert that's both a feast for the eyes and a sugar rust waiting to happen. This year, they're going all out with a chocolate chill ice cream shake that's as festive as it is delicious. 
It has that perfect blend of sweet and spicy. Just enough heat to keep things interesting, but not so much that you're regretting life choices halfway through. And because it's the twosome, of course they're not stopping there. The shake is topped with a cinnamon streusel that adds a little crunch. A few edible marigolds for that authentic Dia de los Muertos vibe. And the piece de la resistance. A chocolate sugar cookie skull that's almost too pretty to eat. Almost. This shake is basically a celebration in a glass. Perfect for those who like their desserts with the side of cultural appropriation and a whole lot of flair. It's the kind of thing that'll make you feel like you're part of the festivities, even if you're just there for the sugar high. So raise your glass, or you know, your ridiculous elaborate shake, and toast to the Day of the Dead in the most delicious way possible. If you're staring down a 30 minute wait for a food booth, who you gonna call? Ghostbusters, obviously. Because let's be real, if you're going to commit to a line that is long, it better be for something supernatural. And let me tell you, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Treat is worth every ectoplasmic second. I took one look at that marshmallow delight and it was like the universe opened up and whispered to me, this is your destiny. I mean, who wouldn't fall in love with a dessert that combines nostalgic charm with sugary goodness? The gooey marshmallow, the sweet, slightly crisp exterior, it's like the culinary embodiment of that classic ghostly mascot, minus the whole trying to destroy New York City thing. So yeah, it was love at first bite. Bring a Slimer-sized appetite when you sink your teeth into this monster of a Korean corn dog. It's like if a food lab secretly collaborated with a ghostly snack demon to create something that would haunt your dreams in the best way possible. First, they stuff it with a classic hot dog and a melty core of mozzarella cheese. But then things take a spooky twist with green derby cheese and a sinister whisper of ghost pepper that lingers like a friendly specter. To top it all off, it's rolled in cheesy corn puffs giving you that perfect crunch, like biting into ectoplasm, but you know, tasty. This corn dog is the food equivalent of catching a glimpse of Slimer. You know it might be a little weird, but you just can't resist. Why even go to Halloween Horror Nights if you're not gonna show off your brand new, totally rad HHN merch to all your jealous friends? I mean, the whole point is to strut around in your spooky new tea or clutching a limited edition collectible that just screams. I survived a haunted house and all I got was this awesome swag. But here's the thing, the HHN Tribute Store? Yeah, that place can get seriously crowded. We're talking lines that are scarier than any haunted house. So maybe consider soaking up the vibes in the Tribute Store instead of doing your shopping there. Like, just take in the eerie atmosphere admire the detailed theming, and then actually stroll them out. HHN merch isn't just locked up in the tribute store. They scattered it all over Universal Orlando. So you can basically shop till you drop, preferably not from fear, but from the weight of all your spooky finds. With 8,300 square feet of retail goodness, the Universal Studios store is like the theme park merch mecca. It's your one-stop shop for all things Universal, from movie meritabilia to attraction keepsakes. But let's be real here. If you're rolling in for HHN, this place is your first and last stop to grab that limited edition, once in a lifetime, must have Horror Night swag. Think of it as the horror fan's holy grail, except instead of eternal life, you get a backpack that can hold all your overpriced snacks while you're waiting in line for 45 minutes. They've got everything you didn't know you needed and it's all waiting for you to throw your money at. So yeah, maybe just check it out before the night gets too spooky. If you ever wondered what it would be like to sit through a crash course in horror makeup while simultaneously laughing and maybe feeling a little queasy, Universal Orlando's horror makeup show is your jam. It's like if a monster movie marathon got tangled up with a comedy sketch show and then accidentally spilled fake blood all over everything, but in the best way possible. 
Now for those who live under a rock, or maybe a little cozy little crib, the Universal Monsters are basically the OGs of horror. We're talking about the classics, Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, the Wolfman, and all their spooky pals. These guys have been creeping out audiences since the early 1900s, and their legacy is immortal. So when you swing by Universal Orlando, not only can you catch a hilarious and sometimes startling show, but you can also dive into the absolute gold mine that is their merchandise shop. This shop is a shrine for all things creepy and cool. Want a Dracula t-shirt? They got it. Looking for a Frankenstein monster plushie that's both adorable and mildly upsetting? Yep, they got that too. And if you're lucky enough to be there during Halloween Horror Nights, the merch goes next level. We're talking exclusive limited edition swag that will make your horror loving heart skip a beat. So if you're even remotely into monsters, Halloween, or just need to add some spooky flair to your wardrobe, this is a must stop shop. It's basically a horror fans candy store, minus the candy, plus way more fangs and claws. The 2024 Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store is like stepping into a dystopian nightmare, but with way more t-shirts. Located behind the Macy's facade in the New York area of the park, this year's tribute store is all about diving headfirst into a city overrun by an ancient evil. It's like someone took your standard post-apocalyptic scenario, mixed in some haunted urban decay, and then said, you know what this needs? A shopping experience. So as you wander through the store, you're not just browsing for merch, you're surviving. The journey takes you through a variety of eerily detailed urban themed locations. Imagine exploring an abandoned warehouse that feels like the perfect hideout for some unspeakable terror or creeping through a subway station where you just know something is lurking in the shadows. The tension ramps up as you realize there's a serial killer on the loose, stalking you as you move from room to room. And just when you think you're safe, boom, you're face to face with a killer. But don't worry, they won't try to sell you anything. Problem. But of course it wouldn't be a tribute store without the merch. Universal Orlando has outdone themselves this year offering all the themed goodies your spooky little heart desires. Whether you're a fan of A Quiet Place, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, or Insidious, there's something here for you to snap up and take home as a creepy souvenir. And if all that fear-induced adrenaline makes you hungry for more, the Tribute Store has you covered with some unique treats. Because nothing says post-apocalyptic horror like enjoying a sweet treat in a sewer themed area of the store. That's right, you can satisfy your sugar cravings by pretending you're deep in the city's underbelly. It's gross, it's weird, and it's kind of perfect for Halloween Horror Night. In the end, the 2024 Tribute Store is more than just a place to buy stuff. It's an experience. An experience that will leave you both terrified and somehow craving more themed snacks. So grab your courage, maybe a friend to cling to you, and dive into this year's most immersive retail nightmare. So, if you're the kind of person who thinks, hey, I want to be generally terrified, but also, I'd love to buy a t-shirt about it, Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights 2024 is basically your dream come true. You've got haunted houses that are specifically designed to make you question every life choice that led you up to this point. Plus, scare zones where the only rule is that there are no safe places. Like, you're not even walking through the park. You're navigating a horror obstacle course where the obstacles want to eat your face. And then there's the tribute store, which is like the final boss of spooky shopping experiences. It's not just a store. It's an immersive nightmare where you can buy things. Because why just be scared when you can be scared and come home with a killer t-shirt. Here's the pro tip, get there early, like obnoxiously early, and maybe splurge on an express pass, because trust me, you don't want to spend half your night standing in line, slowly losing your will to live, before you even get to the scary part. In the end, Halloween Horror Nights isn't just about surviving the scares, it's about leaning into them, screaming your lungs out, 
and then maybe grabbing a spooky snack to calm your nerves. Because let's be real, what's the point of a good scare if you can't celebrate it with some horror themed goodies? Thank you so much for watching. Now this is what I want out of you. I want you to subscribe. I want you to like, I want you to follow, and I want you to share this video far and wide. Do all the YouTube stuff. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you next week on Gulf Coastal Connections.